If you recall, my wonderful viewers has sent me a lot of parts for banjos. In fact, I'm sure this tailpiece probably came from one of my wonderful viewers. Anyway, the bottom line is, I uh, know that they had sent me a lot of hooks and parts, and I thought, well, there's got to be a piece that goes in here that made for this. And so I went looking, and sure enough, I found one out of about four or five bags of stuff I opened up. This was in there. And that's what I was looking for specifically. So this has to go in here like this and get screwed in. My only hesitancy is that I don't know where I want this yet. I wish I could string this thing up, but I can't string it up till I do all this. Because, see, this neck angle is critical, and if it's, if it's up this way just a hair too much, and I'm exaggerating, but just a hair, that's too much. And if it's a hair too much this way, it's too much. Could it possibly be at the right place right now? Yeah, it could. It's pretty close, I think, but... Man, I just don't know until I do this. And by the time I know, it's too late. You know, whatever you decide, you're pretty much committed to. Especially if I drill this hole and put this in here. Because this kind of sets that angle to a high degree. You can still manipulate it a little bit. You know, I'd rather not have to manipulate it. You know, so I don't know. I'm a little confused. I think I'm just going to go for it because I really don't know what else to try. So what I need to do now is find a drill bit that's just the right size for that. Actually, I'm a little bit leery to go ahead and do it until I mark it and pull it out of there because you know, I may be drilling too close to a, a problem area on my little block because I had to make a cut out here. <sighs> yeah, I think it'll be okay. I, I mean, I really think it'll be okay. Yeah, in fact, I'm fairly sure it'll be okay. <sighs> it's hard to say though. It'll probably, this will probably protrude, protrude into the area where this is. Um, that's what I'm a little bit leery of. But I don't think I have much choice, so I'm just going to do it. So I'm just going to try to line this up by eye and maybe give it a little bit of a whack with a hammer here and just to kind of get the drill bit to start in straight with because I'm lining this up by eye. Hopefully that'll make an a dent enough that I can go ahead and drill this. Now I'm going to pull out a, a drill bit that Looks like it'd be the right size. And I can see threads on both sides of that, yet I don't see the middle. Let me see if the one I have in here will work. It, it's kind of the same way. The other one's a 64th bigger. I'm not really sure. I think I could use the eighth inch and try that first. If it seems too tight, I can always drill it bigger. So, okay, again, I'm gonna line this up with the headstock and drill straight towards it the best I can. It feels like it wants to start, but I think that's going to be tight, so I think I'm going to re-drill it with this. I think that's a good size there. I'm sure it's still going to be tight. All right, so I'm going to put some wax on this. So I have some beeswax here. And I'll put a little bit of beeswax on these threads before I drive it in there. That'll help it go in better and help it keep from breaking. I have a 10 millimeter here. This is close to the size, but it's not the exact size. Seems to be going in well. That's perfect. I like it when they go in nice and smooth without really getting super tight. Because if it gets super tight, it's going to break that hard wood. It's snug, don't get me wrong, but it's just not crazy tight. There we go. So now we have that straight up and down. Now we put the tailpiece on here, and yeah, that's what I was afraid of. It's in the way, of course. Again, I knew there was going to be a problem. I mean, I, I tried to measure that by without putting the tailpiece there. 
you know it looked like it was going to be enough clearance but of course it's not enough clearance why would it be if it can be a problem oh my goodness that's going to be a problem yeah i don't think that's going to work and I, I really didn't want to modify this see like even these pop rivets doesn't modify it because you can drill those out and then this thing's just like it was boy i hate to cut that off but I don't know what else I'd use it for anyway, so I guess I'm going to have to. Doggone it. There'll still be enough, I think, left between this hole and down here. I was going to try to use this hole and this hole somehow to anchor it, and I don't know if that'll even work for sure. I'm only supposing it will, but it won't work until I get rid of some of this, so I'm going to have to grind some of that off. Doggone, I didn't want to do that can't think of many other options, so I think I'm stuck with that. The way I think I'm going to try to figure this out is I've, I put this on here and set my height to that. In fact, I'll do it again. I'll slide this down till this hits. Then I'll tighten this up. Then I, the inside of this is the same place as the top of this. So if I do this and, and hit that, then I've got place to mark right there so I can either scratch that with a scrap with a uh, all like this which is what I'm going to try to do so I've got a little scratch mark across there now that you maybe see that I don't know but I'm going to just grind it off back to that little mark because I don't have any other options I don't think well there's the result of that so you can see that now I have to figure out a way to tie those two together. And you know, I mean, one option, stupid option would be to wire it, just to put a wire through there and wrap it around. I don't like that option. I want it to look better than that. So I've got to come up with a little better option. I've got an idea. I truly just don't know if it'll work, but I'll show you what I'm coming up with here. Well, I think I've come up with a fairly uh, solid way to make this piece. I have a little hook similar to the shape of a banjo hook like these little hooks on here. I have a hook in here and I've got it inverted with the end up so that I can thread it. And I've got a 632 uh, die here that I'm going to thread it with, or at least that's going to be the attempt I'm going to make is to thread it with that, a 632. And that should fit this little screw, or this little nut here. All I can say is hope for the best, because we'll just have to see if it's going to work. It's about the only size that is going to work in the space I've got. I don't have, I can't make it any bigger than this, that's for sure. Just so happened the wire that I'm using here is just the right size for this die, at least it seems to be. Seems to have threaded pretty darn well. You know, these things usually are 50-50. They either go good or they go bad, and that one seemed to have gone well, so I'm pretty happy with that. Let's see if this fits on there now. Goes all the way down as far as I need it to right now. I'm not sure my threads are long enough yet. I'll have to do some checking here, but I kind of think they're long enough. Yeah, it's, we'll just have to see. So let's see if my invention actually works here. Um, the way I'm doing this is this goes in here like this and it hooks into that. And this can't come out because it's going to be really tight. So this just hooks in there and it's just part of it. I put this in here and go past this and it just barely works by the way but it does go there see so it's in there and then I just put this on the bottom and I can already tell the threads aren't quite long enough so it's real I mean I could put some washers on there to make it up but I'm gonna just add some more thread because I've got I've got it all set up here to do that and I might as well just add a little more thread and the nut is longer than the thread was anyway, so that's a good thing. So I'll just put some more on here. It's not a big deal. All right, 
right, let's try lining it up one more time. See if it'll go this time. It looks like there's enough threads now. It's a little bit hard to tell, I'll be honest. As far as I can tell, it looks like there'll be enough. So let's put this on and see if it's gonna thread on all the way for me without being a problem child. Put a drop of oil on it just to, in case it decides to give me trouble. I know it's not in camera very well, but you can probably see what I'm doing there. So, ah, and it got tight right there at the end as it's starting to poke through here. So, as typical, par for the course. Let me find a pliers or something that'll work to turn that. I'm hoping this will work. These pliers here really are electrical pliers, but they seem to grip things really well, so that's why I'm using them. That's good and snug, really tight, very good. And then with the strings pulling that way, it can't go anywhere. So I'm real happy with that solution. It looks like it belongs there, doesn't it? That's the best I got. And uh, as far as I can tell, that isn't gonna pull out because it's sticking through the hole by about oh, a sixteenth of an inch. It's on the other side of the hole. So that should keep it from pulling out because if anything, this is gonna rock that way and it, you know, it should keep it no problem. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, I thought I had pre-selected a set of tuning keys that would work for this thing. I've got a bunch of tuning keys here on, you know, in the shop. A bunch of them. I went through all of them. None of them fit these holes. And I have a couple of really old ones that sort of get close, but even they don't fit exactly. And unfortunately, I mean, I thought those were the ones that were gonna work, but then I looked at them closer and they're mismatched. The buttons aren't the same. They're similar, but they're not the same. And the, the gearing wasn't the same either. And so I thought, well, that, I can't put that on there, but they, they almost fit the holes. They came closer than anything else. These tuning keys are really nice in that they're super fine tuning, very fine tuning. In other words, the, if you look at the, uh, the gear there, look how tiny the gear is, the worm. Uh, very, very fine tuning. So they would work. Um, take a lot of turns to tighten them up because of this fine gearing. I mean, it's way finer than the norm. If you look at yours, you'll see the difference. It's way finer. Well, anyway, those sort of fit the holes. Like you can see, they start down in, but they don't fit. And the cl more, you, the closer you get, the more it bends this top piece. So, like if I force it in there, it starts to bend this top piece, as you can see it's just bending it because it does not fit. And so, I don't know what to do. I hate to re-drill these holes. That would just make a mess because really, they're off by quite a bit. The two middle holes, you could probably make a case that they're close enough, but the outer holes, both of them would have to be spread out that may be what I just end up having to do because I don't know of anything else to try. I gotta be honest, these keys aren't doing it for me too much because if you loosen this center hub, they turn okay. If you tighten this center hub, they get really hard to turn. So I don't know if these are even good enough to use. They're okay, I think. Doggone. Yeah, I tightened the hub on this set and you can't really turn them very well. And the problem with loosening them up is they want to back off on you. See, they turn fine when they're loose, which indicates to me they're not machined very well. And this one's got a, 
a war spot right here in the worm gear, so I'm worried about that. In fact, when you turn it back that way, it doesn't turn. Doggone it. Uh, it's just not simple. Seems to turn okay going that one direction, but when you start backing it up, it gets it starts getting grindy. Well, I'm gonna have to do some more thinking because not much is working, and I, I don't think you can order tuning keys that are gonna fit these holes. Well, I've done a bunch of math and done a bunch of measuring, and I'm finding out that these are approximately 880 thousandths on center. Except for these two, which are quite a bit less than that. Um, I don't know, these two are drilled off. They all seem about right, except for these two. You know, eight, 880 thousandths would be pretty good. I would, I'm just looking at these. These seem to be more than that. These, if I was guessing, these are, I would guess these at closer to, you know, 890 or, or even 900 thousandths. 890 probably somewhere in there. So these are just a little bit more than this spacing and that's the problem and I doubt we're going to find any any closer than these. I am going to go online and look though and see if there is vintage tuning keys for for this kind of thing. Um, boy it sure does not match up though. That one there is almost a half a hole off by the time you get there. This one's um, a third of a hole uh, off, at least. This one's almost a half. Yeah, so those two there, they're shorter than the rest. Boy, they don't make it easy on you. Okay, just the math on this, just to give you, again, just to make it straightened out. The best I can figure, and it's really hard to figure, these are spaced at 880 thousandths on center. These are spaced at 913 on center, which is the closest I have in stock. So I'm gonna look online and see if I can find anything that's closer to 880. Something between 880 and 913, anything would help. Well, I've done a fairly good search online. Don't find anything that's really workable. Everything online seems to be much bigger or wider than these are. These are the closest thing I've found so far. The difference between these and this, at least on average, by my calculation, and that's about all I got is an average because every time you measure it, you get something a little different and it's, you know, one side doesn't measure the same as the other. So based on my average, I'm off by 115 thousandths or 114 thousandths roughly. So that's how far off we are. In other words, I have to extend these holes out by that much. And if I thought these tuning keys were worth all the trouble, I may might plug these holes and then re-drill them. Might not see much trouble, but I'm not so sure these tuning keys are worth the trouble. I mean, they're very fine adjustment. That part's cool, but they don't seem to turn very smooth, which is probably why we're, they've been replaced, and that's why I have them. I'm not sure how you calculate this, but these inner holes, they got to be moved out just a little bit, but the outer holes got to be moved out almost twice whatever that amount is. That's the way it looks like to me by my, you know, eyeballing it and looking at it and everything. I'm going to think on it overnight and see if I can think of an idea. Well, my friends, I have determined that the tuning keys I was trying to put on here were no better in terms of spacing than these are. These are more modern. These turn much better. Uh, they're, you know, I just have more faith in these. Uh, I, they're a good match set, so I think everything's going to be fine. They do match my... Uh, drill jig really good so I've got my drill jig clamped on here and the hole spacing is very close so I've just eyeballed through the hole spacing at a bright light and I kind of split the difference basically so I'm just going to go through here and ream these holes I first thought I was going to do it at the drill press but I actually think I might be able to do this better right here with a regular drill 
and I don't know, at least that's my thought right now, so I'm going to give it a shot. I don't know, we'll see. This could be a mistake. You never know sometimes. Almost any decision you make could be a mistake. Acts like it worked. Let's see what damage it did, if any. I hope none. I'm afraid it might have. Well, that really doesn't look too bad. I'll tell you what, considering all the hassle I've had with this, that's a pretty good result. Aha! That's pretty good. And you really can't tell I did that. Yeah, you can a little bit. Right here, it looks a little bit funky. Not too bad, though. I don't think anybody would really realize I had done anything there. I like that. That's a good result. Can I get the same result on the other side? I hope so. So, I'll get that lined up and show you what that looks like drilling the other side. Well, here we go again. I've got it lined up as best I can. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Hopefully it'll work on that side too. A little bit tighter on that side, I gotta be honest. It's a little, it's a little bit not, not as good. Let me see what this one looks like. Yeah, even this one's a little bit tight. See, the, the problem is, if you look at it there, there's still a little bit bowed up in the middle. So when you tighten that down, that's gonna pinch the pins. I really thought that was gonna work, but it kinda sorta did, but it just didn't. Bummer. So I guess I got close, but that was kind of a fail in a way. I don't know if I should just try it again. I think I'm just going to kind of do it manually, elongating the length here. Oh shoot, that wasn't nice. It picked up a chip right there. That wasn't good. I got to fix that before that gets away from me. Bummer. Hopefully that'll fix it. Ah. I'm a little frustrated now. I don't know. I'm going to have to back up a little bit and see what I can do about that. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm just visually inspecting this. I can see that the outside here is pinched. I can see, you know, um, actually it's the outside on both sides. The outside is pinched. And then this right here is pinched. So basically what I'm going to do is draw pencil marks where I need to remove wood because I don't have any options here I can't think of any good options and I don't want them pinched because they just don't operate right if they're pinched this one's the one that looks like it's fairly well centered it's not centered exactly but it's reasonable compared to the rest alright so I've got pencil marks there and I'm going to take my Dremel tool and probably hate myself for this, but I don't have too many options. You got to do something to make it work. And you do have to plug in the Dremel tool. That is a rule. Eventually I'll learn that rule. Okay, before I go crazy with that, let's see how well that did. I'll be honest, I can't see much change. Trying to be conservative on what I take out so that I don't do more than I have to. Wow, that's better. That's, that's pretty good. I'll take that. And it doesn't really look bad either on the peg head. I mean, you know, it's not perfect, but doggone, that's pretty good considering all the issues. That's, that's fitting flat now. It went in there without really any, you know, no big deal. I didn't have to force it in. 
just I like that. I'm good with that. So that side's fixed as far as I'm concerned. Now we'll move on to the other side. And again, I'm going to do the basically the same thing. Just sit it on here and see where I've, where my biggest problems are. This one seems to be mostly here and here. Um, again, this one's pretty good. There's a little bit on this one, but not very much on this one. So basically the same thing. That one's almost good enough. Not quite as good as the other side though, so I'm going to see if I can figure out where the problem is. I'd say it's still mostly on this one down here. Okay, we got that problem fixed. And they both look pretty good. They're not perfect, but they're pretty good. Considering where we were, that's, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. We can, we can put that to bed now. We'll just get the holes drilled and get the screws in there and we'll call that good enough. Okay, in order to start this process, what I'm going to do is try to center this little awl in the center of each hole and kind of get a hole started. I find it better to use the awl rather than just try to drill it. If you, It'll just be a little more accurate takes a little longer it's an extra step but it's better job in the long run now that I got the holes marked I can take that out of the way drill the holes then well that should work now we'll get our wax and we'll coat our strings with wax. In fact, I think I'll just coat them all while I'm doing this. It's just easier. If you don't think this wax helps, last night we were putting together a, uh, a new bed from one of the online places, I think overstock.com or something. Anyway, it's for the new rental apartment up there that we're going to be renting out. Kind of like a B and b thing, Airbnb thing. Well, we were having to drive in screws, and I said, go get the paraffin wax. We, we were barely able to get them to drive in, and we got the paraffin wax. They drove like butter. It was not even similar. It was black and white differently. So trust me, wax makes a difference. Now this beeswax, I gotta be honest, I don't think it works as well as paraffin, but it works okay. I actually do have some paraffin too, but either one of them, they work. That's the bottom line, they work. And especially if, when you're driving it in the first time into a new hole, the wax really helps. That screwdriver head doesn't fit it very well. Maybe this one will fit it better. And I could use a power screwdriver, but on this hard wood, you'll end up stripping out your head of your screw if you're not careful. And you really should drive them all before you tighten any of them. As my buddy always says, Mr. Bradshaw, elderlyiron.com and Redneck Restorations and this old truck. He's got a bunch of names on YouTube. This is another one of those situations where Everything lines up so perfectly that there's not much point in waiting till the end to tighten them all. I can tighten them as I go because the holes are lined up and it can't move. If you got play in there and it can move, then you better tight, wait to tighten them until you get them all started. This thing might come alive yet today with the fact that we're getting these tuning keys on here now. We 
all we need is a bridge and some strings and we're off to the races now that's assuming that the tailpiece and the neck angle are pretty good and right now that's an assumption because I don't know well that's got that they all turn okay so I think we're good I'm gonna go ahead and put a little oil on these and turn them around or so turn them with this little doohickey if it'll let me the problem is this is not really that good for mandolins it's better for guitars more space Okay, now we'll turn it around and see if we can get the screws on the other side here. These holes probably could have been just a hair bigger, wouldn't, wouldn't have hurt anything, but they're about right for this screw. This hard maple, it's hard to get a screw to go down in it. I'm going to start them all and see if I can do it with the screwdriver because I mean with the electric screwdriver because this is really hurting my hands at least I got them started I got one extra screw in case I tear one of them up I think I'm gonna try using these little minute miniature bits here and see if the, one of them fits it really well that's that would be the first key I think finding something that fits it really well. I'm going to turn it on low speed and I'm going to turn it on a light clutch and see what happens. Wow, that's really nice. That worked really well. It, matter, it really matters a lot if you get one that fits it really well and that fit it perfectly. So that makes a big difference. But that saved my hand and I'm real happy with that. And we still have one extra screw so I'll put that away for safekeeping. Now I'm going to spin all of these and uh, let them uh, work the oil around a little bit. There you go. I can get the oil worked around. Ah, we can turn this thing back over and start working on the business end of this now. Here we go. I'm not a fan of Martin mandolin strings, but on something like this, you want the lightest strings you can find. And these are pretty light. These are 34s instead of 40s. So that's a pretty significant difference. I don't know. I think I'm just going to try two of them at the moment. One, the G and the E, and see how that works. And I'm not even sure it will work, but we'll give it a shot here. I'm not sure how you're supposed to... Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Yeah, it, it's really hard to, to string a tailpiece like this. That's what I was afraid of. I really don't know how you're supposed to string this. It's, it's not a simple thing to string because the strings want to work back off of there. I think I got it, but I have to get up to close-up glasses and figure it all out here. It's close, but it's not right. Yeah, it's. I don't like these kinds of tail pieces, but it's about what you have to work with on something like this. I'm just going to use this as a temporary idea. This is a banjo bridge. I mean, it potentially could be the bridge I end up using, but I'm just trying to figure it out right now. Just kind of using this for a height estimate. Oh, come on. Give me a little break here. Gee whiz. That's going to be a little tall, probably, but it might work. I'm going to wrap that about three times 
maybe even four because these posts are tall, number one. The nut's kind of high and that'll get it further down the deal and gives me a little extra string to play with, especially in this initial setup in case it doesn't work. I can reuse it maybe. It's starting to make a noise. Just going to get myself a rough measurement from the 12th fret is, um, oh, it's 17.6 millimeters roughly. So we're, we were closer to when I had it there the first time. About right there roughly. That'd give me a ballpark idea. I think I'm only gonna put two strings on it for the moment just to kinda start seeing where we're at here. get these strings on that is a absolute for sure it's just something has to fight you on these every time height wise we're kind of high I can tell that I've got other options just not sure they're good options this is like a four string banjo which could become an eight string mandolin I guess but it doesn't spread the stress out very far um, won't do any good to try these they're still tall chance I could take quite a bit off the bottom of this one and that may be all I need to do. Action up here is pretty high too. Yeah, I'm just doing some evaluating and some thinking. Trying to decide if this head's going to be tight enough. I don't think it is. So I think I need to go around and tighten all that up a little bit too. So I'll do a little bit of all that kind of work off camera. I'm going to tighten up this head just a little bit more because I don't think it's going to be stout enough for eight strings even with these light strings. And I'll show you what the next step is once I get to it. Whoever thought up putting eight strings on a banjo head strung as tightly as a violin wasn't doing very good thinking in my opinion. <laughs> Stay tuned to see what this thing sounds like. So here we go. This is all you get. this thing <laughs> quite honestly it's fun to play it would be a great little thing to play with and learn on but it's different it just feels different the weight of it the holding it the everything it just just completely different it just has a different feel altogether than a mandolin and of course it sounds a whole lot like you're playing a mandolin on a banjo too so <laughs> There's that. But anyway, it's been a fun project. I really do like the way it turned out. I am absolutely tickled with all my little innovations and it just, 
I mean, it couldn't work out any better. And you can see there how I got the peg head worked out and got the holes to match up. Even though those holes didn't match the tuning keys I have in there, I was able to uh, just kind of, I don't know, elongate them just slightly just to make it work. And you really can't tell I did anything to it. Even up close, it looks pretty darn good. Hope you enjoyed watching all this. Thanks so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.